Hello friends, welcome back to the session. We are continuing lesson number nine, reproduction in animals. In the previous video, we studied about the development of embryo. Today we are going to learn how chicks are born from hens. I already explained that in the previous video, the hens, the laying eggs. And before that, their fertilization is internal. So in hens, internal fertilization take place, but hens are not giving birth to chick. How are they born? They lay eggs and from the eggs, the young ones are, young chicks are coming out. See that paragraph I am reading, internal fertilization take place in hens, but hens do not give birth to babies like a human beings or cow. You know that they do not. How are the chicks born? We are going to learn about it. Soon after fertilization, the zygote divides repeatedly and it travels down the oviduct. As it travels down, many protective layers are formed around it. The hard shell that you see in the hen's egg is one such a protective layer. In hens, the process of development is totally different from that as we learned in human beings. After fertilization, the zygote divides repeatedly and it travels down the oviduct as in human. As it travels down, many protective layers are formed around it. That protective layer only we are seeing as the shell of the egg. The hard shell of the hen's egg is one such a protective layer. After the hard shell is formed, what is happening around the um, developing embryo, the hen finally lays the egg. After that, the embryo takes about three weeks to develop into a chick. You might have seen the hen sitting on the eggs to provide sufficient warmth. So what is happening after that? The hard shell is formed around the embryo, then the eggs become hard. Then the hen is laying the egg. Then the hen sit on the egg to keep it warm. Then after three weeks, the development of the chicks take place inside the shell. And after three weeks, the uh, development of embryo is complete and it is developed into a chick. And the outer shell bursts and the young chick comes out of the shell. So this way the development of embryo take place in hands. Now, let's see this paragraph. In animals which undergo external fertilization, development of the embryo take place outside the female body. The embryos continue to grow within their egg covering. After the embryo develop, the eggs hatch and like that, the young ones are developed. So, we learned about external fertilization. We know that um, the, in the, the animals, the development of embryo take place outside the female body, usually that is in water. The embryo grows within the egg covering only. Example that frog and all fish all we learn. After that eggs are hatched and you can see the young one of the frog you can see easily that is swimming in water. Understood that is after the eggs are hatched, young one of the frog that is tadpole is coming out. Now we are going to learn about viviparous animals and oviparous animals. Just I am reading the paragraph, you see it. We have learned that some animals give birth to young ones while some animals lay eggs, which later develop into young ones. The animals which give birth to young ones are called viviparous animals. Those animals which lay eggs are called oviparous animals. The following activity, yeah, that is about the activity that to understand the uh, eggs of different animals. What we can understand from this, we learned external fertilization, internal fertilization, etc. Then we also learned that some animals are giving birth to young ones, example human being, cow, buffalo, etc. Some animals are laying eggs, usually birds, then lizard, crocodile, snake, etc. Then they later, the young ones are developed from the eggs. So the animals which give birth to young ones are called viviparous animals. 
and similarly those animals which lay eggs are called oviparous animals so these are the two definition you have learned in smaller classes also about this now this one activity you go and observe the eggs of frog lizard butterfly etc hen crow and other birds that we can see it. you might have seen the eggs of hen crow etc usually we can see it but can you see the eggs of uh, cat dog etc no why because they are not laying eggs they only give birth to young ones so the animals examples of oviparous animals we can say which are they most of the birds then lizard butterfly crocodile snakes all these are examples of oviparous animals because they lay eggs and from the eggs the young ones are hatched then we can say examples of viviparous animals what are viviparous animals the animals which give birth to young ones are called viviparous animals so we can say examples of viviparous animals as human being cow goat camel elephant etc they do not lay eggs their young ones are completely grown and developed in the female's body and they are examples of viviparous animals so we conclude today's session here so we learned so many things in this lesson still the lesson is left i every day i am repeating after the uh, video you have to read the lesson at least two times every line of the textbook is important nowadays questions are asked from the textbook only that you can answer only if you have touch with the textbook so all of you read the lessons So we wind up today's session here. Thank you.